This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. Winning without contest. The title for the best named vulnerability write up of the year. We have a potentially serious SQL light exploited flaw named Stranger Strings. Great name. The concept or, or the, the rather the, the concern of this behind this is significant because this flaw was first introduced into SQL light version one point zero point one two which was released on October 17th of the year 2000, more than 22 years ago. And it was only just recently fixed in release 3.39.2, which was released this summer on July 21st, 2022. In other words, this flaw has been present in SQLite for 22 years. And the biggest problem, if you, you might be thinking, oh, you know, SQLite, I don't use that. <laughs> the biggest problem is SQLite is by far the most popular embedded database, which is used quite literally everywhere. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To get a quick sanity check just now, as I was putting the show notes together, I opened a command prompt, switched to the root directory of my primary system drive, and I entered the command dir space star you know asterisk s q l i t e star dot star space slash forward slash s s meaning check all subdirectories and the text console exploded with hits and scrolled off into oblivion one thing i immediately noticed was that if you have anything from mozilla You've got lots of SQLite. Mozilla loves their SQLite for Firefox and Thunderbird in my cases. Okay, since this was too much information, I tightened the search to just the SQLite DLL. So I did a dir command. First of all, I cleared the screen because I wanted to get my 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 console back. I mean, it was just literally, it was like the thumb just scrolled off to the nowhere. So clear the screen, dir space, Asterisk SQLITE dot DLL forward space slash S. And the result was far more useful and much more chilling. The apps I have installed on my system, which embed the SQLite database engine, some of which I use frequently, but many others which I haven't used after first installing them, are Nova PDF 9, Zend Studio, Acrobat 9, Amazon's Kindle Reader. AutoIt, NetBeans, Perl's CPAN library, Python, Microsoft Edge, Thunderbird Firefox, FreeCAD, Calibre 2, Streamcatcher Pro, Networks, that little network app I talked about last week, even it, PingPlotter, and PHP. And not one of these is an explicit database app. SQLite is the way the world's apps organize any data that they are being asked to retain, even if it's just user preference settings. So here's what the Stranger Strings guys had to say. Uh, Stranger Strings is what they called this. Uh, they're from Trail of Bits. And they said, Trail of Bits is publicly disclosing CVE 2022-35737, which affects applications that use the SQLite library API. CVE 2022-35737 was introduced in SQLite version 1.0.12, released on October 17, 2000, and fixed in release 3.39.2, released on July 21, 
2022. In other words, 22 years. And that what that means, every single copy of SQLite that everybody has, unless it's been fixed, and it probably hasn't, is vulnerable to this. They said it's exploitable on 64-bit systems, and exploitability depends on how the program is compiled. Arbitrary code execution is confirmed when the library is compiled without stack canaries, but unconfirmed when stack canaries are present and denial of service is confirmed in all cases. Now, just to remind everybody, a, snack, a stack canary is something which is which the compiler can be asked to stick on the stack in order to protect from stack overrun. The idea is that, that when you perform a return to using the contents of the stack to decide where to go, before the program does it, it verifies a cookie on the stack has, has not been overwritten before assuming that the stack has not been smashed. So it is possible that the SQLite library has been compiled with those cookies on the stack, in which cases you, the app will crash rather than, than execute malicious code. They said on vulnerable system, but I, don't, I have no knowledge of, of whether or not stack cookies are typically compiled in, um, in, into binaries of SQLite. Uh, if somebody does, uh, shoot me a note. On vulnerable systems, 35737 is exploitable. When large string inputs are passed to the SQLite implementations of the printf functions, and when the format string contains the percent %q, uppercase q, percent lowercase q, or percent %w format substitution types. And we've, not too long ago, we're talking about printf problems. Anyway, this is enough to cause the program to crash. We also show that if the format string contains the exclamation special character to enable Unicode character scanning, then it is possible to achieve arbitrary code execution in the worst case or to cause the program to hang and loop nearly indefinitely. They said SQLite is used in nearly everything. <laughs> Echoing my comment, from naval warships to smartphones to other programming languages. The open source database engine has a long history of being very secure. Many CVEs that are initially pinned to SQLite actually don't impact it at all. This blog post describes the vulnerability and our proof of concept exploits, which actually does impact certain versions of SQLite. Although this bug may be difficult to reach in deployed applications, it is a prime example of a vulnerability that's made easier to exploit by what they called divergent representations that result from applying compiler optimizations to undefined behavior. In an upcoming blog post, we'll show how to find instances of the divergent representations bug in binaries and source code. They said recent blog, a recent blog post presented a vulnerability in PHP that seemed like the perfect candidate for a variant analysis. The, the blog's bug manifested when a 30, when, I'm sorry, when a 64-bit unsigned integer string length was implicitly converted into a 64 into a 32 bit signed integer when passed as an argument to a function so there was a, a an implicit type conversion flaw in fact we talked about one of those not not long ago they said we formulated a variant analysis for this bug case found a few bugs and while most of them were banal one in particular stood out a function used for, per, for properly escaping quote characters in the PHP PDO SQLite module and thus began our strange journey into SQLite string formatting. Anyway, they go on and on. Uh, their, their posting, I have a link to it in the show notes, is extensive and, and interesting. Uh, they did have a great piece of commentary toward the end about the testing of SQLite and how this high severity flaw happened and remained hidden for 22 years. They said SQLite, and this is actually comforting, SQLite is extensively tested with 100% 
branch test coverage, meaning every single branch in the code receives a test. They said, we discovered this vulnerability despite these tests, which raises the question, how did the tests miss it? SQLite maintains an internal memory limit of one gigabyte. So the vulnerability is not reachable in the SQLite program. The program is defined away by the notion that SQLite does not support big strings necessary to trigger this vulnerability. However, the C APIs, SQLite is 100% written in C and, and cross and highly uh, cross platform portable. They said, however, the C APIs provided by SQLite do not enforce that their inputs adhere to the memory limit and applications are able to call the vulnerable functions directly. The notion that large strings are unsupported by SQLite is not communicated with the API. So application developers cannot know how to enforce input size limits on these functions. When this code was first written, most processors had 32-bit registers and four gigabytes of addressable memory. So allocating one gigabyte strings as input was impractical. Now that 64-bit processors are quite common, allocating such large strings is feasible, and the vulnerable conditions are reachable, where before, historically, they weren't, which I think is really interesting. This essentially surfaced because we went to 64 bits, and now that conversion from 64-bit lengths to 32-bit lengths, which could never have been a problem before, suddenly could be. They said, unfortunately, this vulnerability is an example of one where extensive branch test coverage does not help because no one, they said, because no new code paths are introduced. 100% branch coverage says that every line of code has been executed, but not how many times. This vulnerability is the result of invalid data that causes code to execute billions of times more than it should. The thoroughness of SQLite's tests is remarkable. The discovery of this vulnerability should not be taken as a knock on the robustness of these tests. In fact, we wish more projects put as much emphasis on testing as SQLite does. Nevertheless, this bug is evidence that even the best tested software can have exploitable bugs. So on July 14th of this year, 2022, they reported the vulnerability, which they discovered, to the CERT Coordination Center. On the 15th, CERT CC reported the vulnerability to SQLite's maintainers. On the 18th, the SQLite maintainers confirmed the vulnerability and fixed it in the source code. And on July 21st, the SQLite maintainers released SQLite version 3.39.2, which included the fix. The problem, of course, again, is that many and probably most of the individual applications which each brought along their own private copy of what is now a theoretically vulnerable SQL light engine have not subsequently been updated. None of those things that I talked about, most of those have been updated since July. So what do these guys say about this? How do they appraise the real threat, uh, if any, that this represents? They wrote, not every system or application that uses the SQLite printf functions is vulnerable. For those that are, CVE 2022-35737 is a critical vulnerability that can allow attackers to crash or control programs. The bug has been particularly interesting to analyze for a few reasons. For one, the inputs required to reach the bug condition are very large, which makes it difficult for traditional fuzzers to reach, and so techniques like static and manual analysis were required to find it. You wouldn't find it just by throwing crap at the wall and seeing if something crashed. For another, they said, it's a bug that may not have seemed like an error at the time that it was written, dating back to 2000, 
in the SQLite source code when systems were primarily 32-bit architectures. So here again, we have a bug that's very much like Log4J. It's buried, unseen, inside random applications, many of which will never be updated since everything is working just fine. Highly active and maintained apps like Firefox, Thunderbird, and Edge have all likely already updated their code, but many others never will. We can hope that no remotely accessible applications would be vulnerable to this. And it seems unlikely that any would be. But like so many other similar problems we've seen, this adds again to the growing list of latent known vulnerabilities which riddle today's software systems.